One of the most important things we can do as funeral directors, morticians, embalmers is learn from each other because we all encounter different clientele, different situations. Everyone doesn't always do this. So don't reach out and try to collaborate and learn from each other as we go through our careers. However, I have been doing this lately and it's so amazing, but one of the literally most mind blowing collaborations I have done and probably a journey of a lifetime so far for me has been going to England and getting to work alongside a funeral director over there. So this started uh, about two and a half years ago or so. I was on Instagram and I saw this picture and I thought, whoa, who are these people? Where is this funeral home? What are they doing? And so I thought, why not? Why not reach out? Why not try to find out more about them? So this crew is from Uden Funeral Home over in England, just outside of London. They have multiple locations. And I sent a message on Instagram and just said, hey, how are you guys? Wondered if you would ever be up for talking about why you wear top hats and how you do things and how do you get licensed and what is the life of a funeral director like in your country? I got a response <laughs> and it was so quick and they said, when do you want to talk? And so we set up a Zoom meeting and it was with this guy, Matthew Uden. Matthew and I have become friends, classiest, most amazing guy ever. And we began this journey together through this one first initial contact. Then we set up the Zoom meeting. And I thought, okay, we're going to get on. We'll talk for like 10, 15 minutes. I'll find out a little about funerals in England. But no, I don't know. Matthew had set it up. So when we got on the video, I could meet all of the staff as he walked me around. I could see the different areas within their one location. And then I could also see as they took a funeral out for the day, which meant as the conductor was wearing their top hat and leading the funeral down the road, as the staff lifted the coffin and placed the person in the coach and all bowed together, which they do for every single service,
So I was getting this huge sneak peek into what they did. And we threw out there, hey, why, what if I came to visit you? So over the course of many, many, many months, we planned out this event and this journey and this trip, um, I would say of a lifetime, up to my lifetime at this point. And so me and my family got on a plane and we headed to England. So when me and my family arrived in England, Matthew had laid out two full days that I was going to be spending with them at the funeral home. Kind of wish it had been way more because it was just so, just so filling of an experience. Um, the first day was a little more casual. We visited the cemetery and we visited the funeral home and got to just kind of see how the funeral home is operated, meet a lot of the staff. And then I got to spend some time with Mim Bulmer, who is there working as well. So we got to learn the front side and the back side of the business while there in a glimpse. We got a tour around the cemetery as well. This introduced me to the tradition of the flowers and leaving the flowers out of the cemetery. Also the ledger style headstones that they have. We talked about leasing of the grave spaces and the different ways that they do the burials and the cremations and just kind of how everything is laid out there that is different than here. Um, no vaults being used and coffins rather than caskets. Um, so there's, you know, some similarities, like if you just glimpse, it looks like a funeral, but if you really dive in, there's all these differences between what we do. Hey guys, we are here in Chislehurst in Kent in England. We are going to be joining Sarah for a tour of Kemnell Park, which is a local cemetery. It is a newer cemetery, opened in October 2012. Um, they have a lovely chapel here, so many services done here on site. So give me a few facts about the cemetery. How big is it? We have 55 acres here and we can do 3,300 services, uh, burials. We have burial spaces here. We can also then accommodate for loved ones that have had their cremation service here, and we can lay their cremated remains to rest. And you've only tapped into how much of the space so far? Uh, we've got 11 acres on this area, and phase two we opened 16. So we've got a very mature woodland as well, where we've done um, burials for loved ones as well. So many options. So let's go find out about the cemetery. A member of our team will always meet the cars and the cars will then come onto the bridge here. Okay. That's for us to transition from the funeral director's care then coming into our care so the families are aware that there's that changeover. Okay. So if we start heading down towards the... But the funeral director always stays on site? Yes. Okay. Yes. He's always with us but we just like the families to feel that we're transitioning from the funeral director into then our care. So Kemnell Park kind of revolutionised funerals by having TV screens okay. during a service. That was how I, how far I feel behind we was uh, with actual funeral services. So they then introduced TV screens where during the service you've got the ability to have pictures of your loved one during a service or a video. Okay. But you never could. Before? Never could. No. So how long have you been open? Seven years. Seven years. Before then, there might have been the odd place. I had never been to one. Uh, 
like the odd place who might have had TV screens. Hmm. Now they've all got them. The majority we have are cremation services. Okay. We do have burials, um, but the ratio on cremations is a lot higher. But they would still have their service here and then we would take the deceased to their resting place. If you go into it with the right intentions and if it's about improving the service for the families, mm -hmm. you can't be wrong. You literally can't be wrong. You can, it might not be correct, but if you're doing it with the right intentions right. for the family, because again, you're going to hear me preach like this the whole time, um, it's, you only get one chance. Yeah. So everything's so important and that's where we'll come up to, to Kenmore Park. And, very, very, very rarely would I have to ever say anything to Sarah about, oh, could we do this or could we improve that? Because they understand it. They understand that everything's important. Mm -hmm. But then they've got to deal with the minister, make sure that they're happy. The funeral director, make sure that they're happy. But most importantly, the family. Mm -hmm. But then with all three people, they're all after different needs. So I'll be saying to Sarah, why... If we got a bench all the way along here, we need room for um, if there's anyone disabled coming in a wheelchair. But they thought about that before I can complain about it. Right. So it's about them think, thinking like us. Why? As funeral directors, as I said, we, we've got to be ready and have our eyes open for everything, right. every change. I said earlier about like the direct cremation. That might be the whole industry. Mm -hmm. I hope not. Um, I really do for business. Yeah. <laughs> but for everything. But it's because... to give that personal touch. Yeah. You know, it, it's so important for families. Mm -hmm. And at the moment for us, it is tradition, isn't it? And that's this where we're is how so we lucky. do things. This is, we're, we live in a real tradition yeah. around that. And, you know, very much, um, it, we really are, we're, like me and Sarah, are more traditional than mm. we realise. We yeah, have no absolutely. idea like how traditional we are yeah. um, because in other areas they're just not like that and everyone around these areas are like us mm. so they want traditional things they want the fin directs to turn up in shiny shoes you know we just want the best but we want the basic yeah. best do you know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. so they've all got a stand with their names on it um, and then their floral tributes are around that. And that's what the funeral directors do while the service is taking place. So how long does that stay there? Ideally, we like to have them out for five days, but we do tell the families that it is very much dependent on weather. When the frost starts, the last thing we want to have is perish flowers on the park. So we will say to families, ideally we'd like to keep them for five days. Thank you so much for having us. Anything last moments you want to tell us about the cemetery maybe we haven't discussed already? No, I don't think so. It's very nice to have you here with us. So excited. We've learned a lot from each other, I feel like, and things I want to take back and implement everywhere. Um, so much hospitality here at this cemetery, which is phenomenal. Things I've, yeah. I've never seen. Maybe it's in America, or maybe it's just how you do things, but. Families are very important to us. Very gracious. Looking after our families are paramount to us. Well, thank you so thank much. You. So Yudin and Son's funeral home has been around a very long time. A lot of tradition, a lot of just classy is the number one word that comes to mind when I talk about Yudin and Son's. Um, Matthew and his staff, um, his brothers and uncles and cousins and everyone that's there and working put so much heart and tradition into everything they do. I can't speak high enough or highly enough about them. What impressed me most was how much they regard each other as coworkers and staff members. I know I was only there two days, so I'm sure there's some trash talking at some point, but the order of somebody leading and then others following and making sure things were in proper order and everybody doing their part was very clear observing everything they did. There was a very orderly fashion to 
everything from placing things in the trunk of the car that you may need at the cemetery, like booties or umbrellas or Kleenex or little baggies for jewelry or things like that. Everything is always properly stocked. I'm quite thorough and I'm a list maker, as you guys know, and Matthew's the same way. So I had you know, I felt like he's my, soul, my soulmate of the organization world <laughs> um, because that is how he operates everything at the funeral home. And it also allows for less error when you look because if everybody's following the same formula, you're going to get that same result, the same quality of service, the same quality of experience for the families that are served there. And I think that was key to why Uden and Sons is so highly regarded in the area, within the community, and within the staff is because they respect that there is this order in place. If someone doesn't follow it, then they're not partaking in the team, and therefore they need to go. Um, and so you really know you need to step up because everybody is counting on you to do your part, and you're counting on everybody else to do theirs. And that is clearly in place um, from the car washing, which is like very well known in the area because of the system they've come up with, like special water and how they um, wax and clean and everything they do is very regimented. And you wouldn't think cleaning a car would be that big a deal. Oh, no. People have done videos with them, not just me, but people have done videos with them about how they wash cards because their system is so leveled up for perfection. Uh, it's amazing. So got to see that and got to um, just check out how they take care of all their facilities, how they've modernized and are modernizing and just the decor and the setup. Now, going to England to go to a funeral home and learn from them is like showing up and only visiting one funeral home in America and assuming that everything goes that same way. So I know that I got a glimpse of only a little bit of what happens in a traditional British service because as we know, traditions run different in different parts of a country within different groups within different religions. So I was getting a glimpse into the life of a funeral director and the life of, you know, how a cemetery is run and how a crematory is run and such in a different country. However, I think there's a really good glimpse as to what transpires for services in England. Um, I learned about the different positions and how an embalmer and a funeral director are very different there. Um, a funeral director is more a trade. It's you grow up or you, you know, go into the business learning it. You don't go to school for it or anything. Whereas embalming is like it is here where you do schooling, you do apprenticeship, you learn alongside someone and just become licensed and do that. And there's, you know, sometimes there's crossover, but not often. It's two very different fields of work. Um, so I thought that was super interesting. Um, and it's often a family affair as it is here in America, but it's not as common here. Um, and there as well, it's now first generations coming up in the business. So that was really fun to get to hear about the similarities, but also the differences between our traditions within the business. 
And then the second day, we were full on in top hat mode. Um, we showed up in our black um, suited vest and they outfitted my husband and he worked alongside the staff that day and I took more of a observer position, but it was very, very gracious. The family we were there that day for the funeral um, knew I was there, knew why we were there and allowed us to video and photograph and, you know, kind of from an observer standpoint, just be with them during the course of laying their mother to rest and honoring her. And that was, it was so special that they let us be there for part of that. And so the, the second day we were there, we got to work alongside them for a whole funeral. Um, and so we, got to the funeral home and they do this like multi-step checking the deceased, making sure what is on the deceased before the coffin is closed and making sure the jewelry's on, the jewelry off, the cl what clothing's on, clothing off, you know, like just making sure the family's getting back what they need and that the jewelry is on. This happens at a lot of funeral homes, um, but it was quite the triple check system. Everything's getting checked at the same time. Look, it's getting polished. So I'll check, I'll check on this side, make sure the handles are not falling off. Um, so I'll just give them a little tug. Make sure they're all sitting down, not sitting up like that. So sometimes it happens. So make sure they're all sitting correctly. And I'll just go around the coffin just to make sure. So first thing, um, Matthew called the family and checked in with them, made sure the family knew exactly what time we were going to be coming to their home because they go by the home to then pick up the family in the limousines um, and with the loved one in the hearse out in front of the home. And then they all go together then to the cemetery for the burial. And so they made a phone call to check that the family knew exactly what time we were arriving exactly how many people were gonna be in that limousine. So they were allotting for where everyone would be riding. Um, the jewelry, double checked the jewelry, just really went over every item, fine tuned to make sure that every tidbit was covered. Because they are completely now settled. They've had their call. They know they've, they've met me before, but they've had that phone call. So when I arrive, they know the, the, they know the outline. Going. They know what's going on. So it's just a nice calming voice at the end of the line to say, look, we're, we're here. We've got all of our flowers. We're on our way. So then um, we went over, like, as a team meeting. We did a team meeting, like, who was doing what. And during that, I've never seen this at a funeral home. They made sure everybody knew all the players for the day. So we have how many people riding in limousines? Who is the next to kin? What is their name? You know, like all these parts. So everybody was on the same page. The attention to detail was amazing. Then we started to place all the flowers on the car. So in England, you deck out the cars with the flowers. It's not just set them up in a chapel, they are attached all over the cars as you go in procession. And they may be the person's name or their relationship to you. So those were huge things and it's done very specifically. So things are propped up, things are shown, things are visible, all the flowers are in a perfect place. We don't do that here in America and place them on the coach and on the limousines and vehicles that way. Um, so that was very new for me to watch and for me to see what systems they used, um, you know, zip ties and all sorts of things. But if you have the zip tie, you need to have the scissors and the cutters to quickly get them off when you get to the cemetery. So you have to think of both sides of everything you're doing when you're doing this. At this point, then we take the loved one, we place them out in the coach. And what I mean, these guys do this ceremoniously every single time they do. They lift the person, they place them in the coach, they take a moment, they bow, 
it's a moment of reverence and it's really cool to see that they do that and to know that when your loved one's taken care of by them, they are taking care of them in every aspect along that way. We then got all ready and all got in our vehicles to head over to the family's house. So as that procession begins, the conductor, which is the funeral director who wears the top hat, will walk in front of the lead vehicle. They don't do this the whole way to the family's house if they live a distance, but they do it a ways to take that moment of honor and to just show the community what is happening and to conduct that service. That is the part that I had waited since that first day we talked to get to see in person. And it was as cool and amazing as I had hoped um, that there's something about that top hat that just makes a funeral procession grand. And it was really cool to get to see that in person. Um, so I wish that I could be part of that more often, truly. It was really, it was so neat. Um, and so then, then Matthew got into the vehicle. We stopped, he bowed, he got in the vehicle, and then we drove across town to go get the family. So when we got to the family's house, they also had flowers that had been delivered to their house in the front yard. So we all got out, the men all took and attached, um, it happened to be all men, uh, attached all the flowers that were at their homes to the vehicles as well and got them all set up. Um, the family, you know, took some time, went out to the um, vehicle, you know, her casket or her coffin was in there and just kind of took some time and a few moments. And then we all got in the vehicles and headed to the cemetery. So when we got to the cemetery, uh, we went to the chapel to have the service. Now the services are very much shorter there than they are in America. Um, they do play quite a bit of music. The services, they, you know, I think they pay for, for songs and the service itself was very short, um, maybe only 10 minutes. And then um, we had processed in and then we processed out of the chapel and we went down then to the burial site where they hand lowered the coffin down into the grave with no vault in there um, and we did the burial. And so it was really neat to see from start to finish this whole process and the differences, the hand lowering of the coffin, the no vault, um, then they leave all the flowers get left at the cemetery. Not just one or two, all the flowers are left there um, because that's just what they do and they give the family a couple days and then they discard all of them. So it's this, this process. You leave all the flowers, the family can come back and get some or they're all discarded, but they're left to kind of show how many people sent flowers to this person. It's like a show of how much they're cared for and how much they're loved and who loved them and wanted to send support and flowers. And so it's a huge part of the process as whole, the flowers. So you may be wondering, what about the visitation? Do they see the person? What's, what goes on there? Um, so a lot of people are kept in cold storage and are not always embalmed. Some people are, some people are not. And the family may call to come visit the person. So they would place them, um, if they're not already in their coffin, they would have them make it on a table or something, bring them up to a viewing room. The family would come in, view them, and they'd be put back in cold storage. And this may happen multiple times. It's not a visitation or a viewing like here in America where the family's gonna be there from like two to four and anybody can drop in to visit. This is a, family only thing. So there's not huge visiting times, huge wakes, as you might call them, that you would go and visit the person. Like viewing is not as common of a thing there as it is here in America. They do more of, rather than as much embalming, they do what they call facials, where they get the person's face presentable for that viewing time. So they would close the eyes, close the mouth, do some makeup, do their hair, and get them dressed and get them ready for 
a viewing time with the family. So those are some of the differences as well with those types of things. I think the whole team at Uden's just takes the responsibility of caring for someone's loved one so serious and they put a lot of time, effort, love into every part of what they do, coming up with new computer systems to organize all of their files and their data to be across all the chapels and to put them all um, into this most hyper-organized and um, to connect all the directors to know what's going on. Like that system is amazing that they put all that work into doing that so they can all be on one page together at all their locations. Um, to the tailor who does their suits, um, to matching all their suits and their ties and having specialty ties. Uh, they have a whole closet, huge closet of ties. So if maybe somebody likes a certain football team, they might wear the tie that goes along with that football team um, on all the staff and just all these different things they do to fine tune their details. And that is what makes them, I think, super special and just so well regarded. They do a lot in their community and they do just so many things. So yes, I'm a big fan of Uden and Sons Funeral Homes. And I'm sure there's many, many, many good funeral homes in England uh, that I could come visit as well. But this one just happened to be who I feel like I was meant to connect with from seeing that first picture to the whole experience of being there with them and talking with them through all the different things that have transpired over the last few years within the funeral industry that have affected us. And um, you've probably seen some of the other videos that I've done about England and with Matthew over the course as well. And we like to consult on some things when we're getting affected by big, big moments within the industry. So maybe one day we'll get Matthew to come to America and see how we do things here. Um, I we're not don't have the top hats, but <laughs> it would still be super fun. So I thank him and his whole staff for having me and my husband come along for the day and for the family for allowing me to come and honor their mother and to take pictures and just be with them. For that day that is something I will never forget um, it was such a huge pivotal moment for me personally and within my career and I'm so thankful for that moment and that I got to do that with them so thank you everyone and can't wait to hear your feedback on my travels to England to work in the funeral home bye <laughs>